practices into your life or not. And we have almost, almost reached the end of our session. And uh, for the last minutes, yes, there will be question and answers, but actually I'll be the one asking first. So we'll go back to what is the Kahoot. <laughs> and I would like to understand if there's any difference between the, the, the answers, the speed of the answers also, and on the results after the session. So I will ask you again, to, um, to scan the QR code. Just give me a moment so I can um, give you the Kahoot once again. It's now generating another QR code, you may scan it. Do we have some more participants? 11? Yeah, we have some more. I think we can continue. Okay. So let's start. First question. Recurrent neurological states of stress and anxiety result in... Ten seconds. Okay, so eight out of uh, 12, I think, uh, got it for no, eight out of nine. Correct. Some didn't answer. Uh, let's continue. We have Samuel right now leading the statement, if you remember from the beginning. So we use our survival mode that is connected to our automatic system in 95% of our reactions. And this is versus our thrival mode that is connected to the reflective system, which we use only in around 5% of our reaction. And again, this is just a statement. The question is coming next. Using mostly our survival mode will affect our... Most of the participants got it right. All the above. Let's see who's leading the podium now. And still Samuel, very well done. <laughs> Good. True or false now? Engaged employees are two times more productive. This is the easy one. <laughs> True or false? Okay. <laughs> 12 of you got it correct. Let's use leading the ball. Oh, Samuel, sorry. We have SS, probably was just faster. Uh, let's see how it goes. Um, another statement research shows us that the practice of mindfulness meditation in a consistent manner conducts structural, structural changes in the neural circuitry. And the question is, 
how many minutes of mindfulness meditation practice per day do we need in order to see significant results? 20, 30, 10, 14 minutes. Most of you got it right, only 10 minutes per day. Very well done, let's see who's leaving the podium now. SS, very well done. <laughs> and let's talk about you. <laughs> So true or false for you, are you actively practicing meditation or would you like to do it in the future? And now the moment of truth. Okay. Still need to convince two of you. <laughs> Very well done. Thank you so much. Let's see how did it go. We had Samuel and SS really fighting for the first place. We have Jim in the third place. Samuel in second. So this means that on first place we have SS. Very good. <laughs> I'm trying to find SS on the cameras. SS, can you raise your, raise your hands? I would like to know the winner. Just put a face on it. <laughs> we don't have anyone, Jennifer, raising the hand to get the credit. No, I guess they're shy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem whatsoever. Uh, so during the whole like presentation and the information you gave, we also had um, comments about questions so i will go ahead and ask you uh, we have one question from um, manuel and he's asking what wellness books do you recommend i think oh, this is very when you talk about meditation and so maybe mm -hmm. you can recommend some books um i have so many um i have some of my references um, mm, 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 mm. depends a little bit if he's more interested at a more personal level or like we were talking here, more uh, professional level. For my references, there are more at a professional level. So I would ask Manuel, is there any chance you can share your email with a few references for you? I think uh, if he shares in the chat, we can save it and then uh, forward it to you. I think that would be great. Great, okay. Perfect, thank you. Uh, we also have more like a personal advice. So here, um, it's a question. I would like to get some advice from you. What is the best way to handle stress in workplace and also in life? Mm -hmm. So like, like I was saying, it's, 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 not, it's not easy, of course. Uh, developing this, this skill of resilience that was the key of, of the presentation is something that is going to help you in the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, then the meditation and actually not only actually I'm a, a very <laughs> active, uh, 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 I exercise yoga quite actively apart from meditation works very well for me and actually what works for, for each one, it will vary a bit. Uh, but of course, meditation at the moment, according to scientific research, is the tool that will help you more in cultivating this kind of skills of being aware, of being patient, at, at being relaxed, on uh, being um, in the present moment. And then, of course, all the benefits that I showed, endless lists of, of them, they, they will come up. But they won't come up just because you're aware of it. Uh, just the, the awareness is just a first, first very small step, then it's actually you need to cultivate it and you start seeing the results, the way you breathe before, for example, answer, answering badly. Sometimes we answer badly. You know, why did I say that? Did I say that? It's, it's, not, it's not good. It's not going to help me. So all these things actually you start seeing results after cultivating this and practicing and with experience and it, it comes. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And uh, also Marina wants to know maybe other than more Meditation, what other wellness exercises do you recommend? I truly recommend yoga exercises. 
And I also, actually, with my students as a warm up for my students for my classes, I do stretching exercises with them. <laughs> so I have some videos prepared of uh, three to five minutes before starting each session, and they will uh, they will feel like relax and at the same time it's something that you can do from at your desk so it's really really easy and uh, this is something this is a very good trick for um for if before going to a presentation for example at school or, or at work uh, or before going uh, uh, starting working on the computer and we know we're going to be working for long hours or even to make a break between them um so these kind of things help mm -hmm. meditation it's there's a little bit there's a and that this would be for other level there's a little bit of paradox in the meditation that actually you cannot expect to meditate once and something will happen and you feel different and you're immediately more aware and more focused etc et that doesn't happen actually you need to practice that like i say at least minimum eight weeks consistently uh to see some results so meditation may work in the long run on the, in the long run doesn't work if if you're just going for uh, imagine for a school presentation uh for a coursework and suddenly you feel like okay i'm going to do 10 minutes meditation suddenly <laughs> everything will <laughs> will happen it doesn't happen like that although the, the relaxation exercises yes they have a little bit of a, a not as big impact but a very good impact for the moment to feel relaxed and feel more focused nice <laughs> Um, then we have quite an interesting question. Um, is damaging stress not in part controllable as it depends on how we perceive different stress sources? And so rather than just focusing on meditation, is it sometimes more important to regulate your perception and reaction to different uh, situations? Well, that is completely other level. So actually this question comes from someone that already understands it. When we're talking about resilience and cultivating these habits, what we're doing is that we're working on that. So when it, um, I'm trying to find the question. Um, sorry, can you repeat it? I cannot find the question in the chat. Is damaging stress not in part controllable? as it depends on how we perceive the different stress yes, that's sources. Yes, that's a key point. Uh, actually, when we're, we're practicing all these and developing all these, we're actually working on the perception, on the perception that we have on things. So we get less stress when they happen. So when we have a big, I had the, the image of the big bear in front of us, maybe the bear, <laughs> it's a weird analogy, but the way we perceive it, this fight and flight mode, it allows us to use the 95% that actually is the reflective and we think with logic, then just use the 5% that is the first that comes up, the 5% that just will just scream and run. Okay, so is, yes, it is that, is the perception that we're working on actually. <laughs> Um, we also have a question more um, directed to your own career and um, what was your motivation for your career? Oh, <laughs> my motivation. Um, well, on a more superficial level, uh, it's basically this um, a bit of greed to learn more and more every day. Um, that results quite nicely for me because I'm able to be always working at in study at the same time. And sometimes you really need it if you're to progress your career. Sometimes I think you're very good at what you're doing and I try so hard and I make so much effort and I cannot go further because sometimes we don't have the mental tools and the capacity and sometimes they're academic, not only, but academics work uh, uh, helps a lot and give us another conceptualization of things, another uh, pro problem solving mindset that actually like, Ah, this is what I'm doing wrong. I think I'm doing all this right. And maybe I'm doing this right, but I should be working towards something higher. And the thing is, when we are in a lower level, we don't see it. And maybe we're very good at we are, but we don't get the promotion or we just don't know what we're doing wrong. We're doing, not doing anything wrong, uh, but maybe we're not seeing, we're not seeing the things from other perspective that allow us to then progress. Yeah. So I think this is academic 
framework gives us a lot of tools that help us progressing in our career and see things in other perspectives and even in the lingo and uh, the way uh, you can produce an action plan or uh, produce a very effective presentation all these things make a lot of difference then in the progression and the career progression then i have a lot of uh, personal uh, motivations uh, that uh, made me um made me work in many different places more than the, the ones <laughs> that i mentioned uh, and this is the passion for travel first this is how it starts then the passion for events and it grew for the passion of the whole hospitality industry and then it's going to having working in hotels and start doing trainings for other colleagues and then education so it's like it's one thing they're all connected <laughs> they're not different they're all connected all led one to the other but i think the whole link was always the um the passion for learning and the very very root of it the passion for traveling <laughs> Thank you so much for your answer. And so much network. Don't forget network is very, very important. Yeah. It's something that I always mention out of nowhere to give. <laughs> don't forget networking. It's really, really important for you. And sometimes you do all these. And again, if you don't have the networking, things may not happen. So work on that. Thank you for your advice. Um, we have a question from Camille Grace, and she's asking, what can you advise if a person is not happy with their work environment? That happens quite often. Um, it, it may mean that depending on your position, you may have more or less power of changing that. And this is a fact. So if you are in a position that you can progress in the in, career-wise inside the company and make difference and make a change, please do it. If you tried or if you will try and the company is not open for that, maybe, maybe you should try to change. Not because, um, not because you're not good enough or maybe because they're not good, en good enough for you, but because maybe there's not, there's, it's not a match. Mm -hmm. So maybe the things that you're looking for, they will not be under stood in the context of that because it's a lot to do then at the end with the objectives of, uh, of the company with the aim of the company but um, yes you, you can you should uh, try and uh, because like this also it's an opportunity for you maybe to show that and promote you somehow and lead you maybe to, to progression on your career but if effectively, if effectively you, you see that there's no, no openness of the company Company. actually look up something maybe there's a place for you that you have a very well received correct answer but the, the key thing I, I think you should try yeah try to change if not possible uh, try to change the company if not possible or to train not the whole company but the small small things uh if not possible you change you go there <laughs> go out there and find find your place thank you for your answer and um here also some more uh, requests and tips from Kishan. He's asking, can you share some tips and strategies maybe on how to handle colleagues who are toxic to work with? Yeah. <laughs> Again, depending on your position, if you are in the position of disseminating this brain, you always a bit, but if you are in the position of disseminating this brain engaging through training, so I mean, through structured things, uh, please do. And you don't have to be necessarily in HR. If you are in HR, for sure, you are capable of, of doing it, or uh, at least pro probably you have more opportunities. But even if, if, if you're managing, it's probably very easy for you to also organize trainings um, towards this kind of uh, um, awareness to meditation, uh, sorry, to resilience. That could be, for example, through meditation or not, through, through yoga classes and others. Um, but if you are not in the position, um, of making some change in, in that sense. Um, in any case, the key is always in yourself. So like we were ta talking about the perception, maybe the perception that you have uh, of this person towards you may change if you are the one practicing, using these practices and these tools. Because maybe you'll be more aware that maybe there's an underlying reason why this person is toxic. 
maybe you can help this person, particularly this person, and maybe you can make a change on this person's life. And this is easier than you think. The, the, the thing is, is, is that sometimes we don't stop to think what is the real reason behind it? Does this person has uh, a problem that went into a snowball and now everything always goes wrong? Does this person has a specific personal problem that affects a lot um, their work in the company and the way they, 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 they deal with people? Um, but trying to understand the, the underlying reason can be a start because usually there is one. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. And I think related to that, um, there's also a question um, from Eugene. He's asking when you're managing a team, what are some ways or things you can do to ensure your team is well engaged and to be more productive? Yes, for, for the productivity, there are a lot of KPIs that can be established for the company, but then depends on the company, on you know, the objectives of the company, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for the engagement, the most common things actually is our surveys to make service to, 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 to the employees to understand if they are. But I think it should be much deeper than that. Um, so this to understand if they are or not. But the thing is, even if they are or are not, to implement these kind of practices, can be hard. Make sure that if they are not, at some point they will be. <laughs> so to to engage in this kind, sorry, to 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 implement this kind of trainings and participate. Team buildings also also work very well. So it's, it's not only uh, doing meditation or doing yoga. This is one field. There are other yeah. things that can be done, such as team buildings, for example, inside and outside the company, uh, to 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 stimulate the teamwork and productivity. Um, but yes, I, I would say that to make sure that in the long, long run that they are engaged, and now I'm selling my pitch, let's say, doing this kind of practices in group, implementing them in, in training or like a, a mindful moment uh, per day. If we have time to do briefings every day in hotels, I don't, I don't think three minutes per day at the beginning of a, of a meeting, it's that much significant. And some people will kill me because we all know that in hotels, everybody is running. But sometimes stopping for three minutes meditation, group meditation, and then start working. And you have to try to, to, to tell me if it's right or wrong, but give it a try. And do it not only once, two or three times, four times uh, in a week. And tell me if from one week to the other, if you feel people are more present and more involved. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. That's a good tip. Uh, we have a last question which is how to handle stress from overworking, like if your company overworks you and you have no choice but to um, follow? I guess the answer is the whole presentation, right? Uh, first, work on the way you manage your stress. And second, uh, try to disseminate it with the, uh, within the people you work with. Uh, but yes, it's, it's, it's not going to change. Soon, for sure. I don't think for us. Yeah, it's not going to change. It's going to take a while. Maybe it will never change. So it's something that I think our brains will be smart enough to adapt. But like I was saying, they are still struggling. So it's not something that changes overnight. Then these practices, they help, they help rewiring our brains. But again, these are not solutions that happen like this. It's work, consistency, and seeing the results as we go. Thank you so much. We have a lot of uh, thank you messages for your representation oh. and for the opportunity to, uh, you know, to listen to your presentations and also about the question of Manuel of book recommendations. We also have other students who send their emails, so we will make great. a list for that. <laughs> great, great, great. So wait. thank you so much. Everyone is thanking you a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. It was thank really you. an honor to have you. Vanessa, really, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. It was actually, I said, and it's an honor to me and uh, a pleasure. So thank you so much um, for your time, for your attention, and hope to see you again. Although I didn't see your faces, hopefully, I don't know, you can-, you can Hopefully next time we have less shy students. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can find me on LinkedIn if you're interested and not advertising it, but of course, if you are interested and you want to ask a further question, keep contact, please feel free to do it. And I'll be there for you. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Bye, everyone. Thank you so Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>